Brett Baer this Friday evening. There was not even a pretense of nonviolent protest today in Egypt. Following the death of more than 600 people on Wednesday, the Muslim Brotherhood took to the streets on a self-proclaimed day of rage, armed and dangerous. So far, at least 64 people have been killed today. We have Fox team coverage tonight. Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon with how the U.S. trained the man behind Egypt's military takeover. But we begin with correspondent Leland Vittert. He's live in Jerusalem where it's early morning. Hi, Leland. Good evening, John. Right now in Cairo, a state of martial law exists tonight. Tanks, armored personnel carriers on the streets, and soldiers armed with automatic weapons. The violence we saw today, though, was a little bit different as residents of Cairo took up arms against the Brotherhood, angry that those members had turned their city into something of an urban battlefield as Egypt as a whole inches closer towards civil war. Flames burning through floor after floor of an office building mark the end of an epic battle for Ramsey Square. Following mass funerals and noon prayers, tens of thousands of Muslim Brotherhood protesters began converging. Among them, gunmen firing off their AK-47s ahead of the coming battle. The military will fall, said this man en route. A few minutes later, they attacked a police station, bringing to Storeline streets the chaos of war, complete with soldiers, armored personnel carriers, and the wounded. In a mosque turned hospital, doctors triaged those they could save, while the dead got a piece of tape with their name written in crayon so families could later collect their loved ones. Across the country, the Muslim Brotherhood's day of rage lived up to its name. In Alexandria, protesters, rather than beachgoers, filled the seashore promenade. One woman demanded far more than the reinstatement of deposed President Mohamed Morsi. We call for the execution of the murderer, she said, referring to General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, who led the military coup that took power last month and imprisoned the Brotherhood's leader. A similar scene played out in Ismailia, where Brotherhood supporters took shelter behind concrete walls after attacking a police station. Cairo's bridges provided no such cover from gunfire. So desperate protesters shimmied down electrical wires. With sundown, protesters defied a nighttime curfew, staying in the streets to continue their fight, having lost the battle for Ramsey Square, but not giving up what has become for them a war. The Brotherhood seems undeterred, even emboldened by the violence we saw today. They have called for the day of rage to turn into a week-long protest, given the violence and the amount of gunfire we saw today. Armed insurrection may be a better term for it. John, we are now hearing that the Army is thinking of declaring the Muslim Brotherhood, the party of the former president, a terrorist organization. Back to you. This looks like it's going to go on for some time. Leland Vittert for us in Jerusalem tonight. Leland, thanks.